Hi friends, my name is Meredith and I work for Worthington Libraries. I'm a children's librarian and I wanted to share with you all some awesome new books for second graders that I hope you will enjoy. And you can find all of these books at our libraries. So you can go to the Old Worthington Library, the Worthington Park Library, or the Northwest Library and ask for one of these books. The first one is called Diary of a Pug. And I think that you guys might like this one. First of all, you um, don't know anybody who has a pug. This is a pug. It's one of those dogs that has kind of a, a wrinkly face and they're real little. They're very, very cute. And Pug loves his girl, Bella. Bella is his best friend in the whole world. And um, he also loves arts and crafts time. So when Bella enters them into an invention contest, Pug gets pretty excited about the invention that she comes up with because it is a rocket ship. Now, right before the invention contest, somebody steals Pug's favorite toy. It is the squirrel who lives outside, whose name is Nuts, and Nuts takes the toy all the way to the very top of the highest tree in the yard. And Pug thinks, well, I don't know how I'm going to get my toy back. Then he has an idea and he realizes he can use the rocket. So Pug gets on the rocket, launches himself all the way to the top of the tree, and you know what happens? The rocket breaks. So unfortunately, there is looks like there's going to be no invention contest for Pug and Bella. And Pug notices that Bella is very sad. She's crying. She worked really hard on that rocket. So Pug needs to figure out how are they going to be part of this invention contest when they don't have much time to work on a project. So this one is called Diary of a Pug. And it is the first one. It's Pug Blasts Off. Um, so if you like dogs, I would highly recommend you pick up this awesome book. The next one I have for you is Trouble at Table 5. And Trouble at Table 5 is a new series. This is the first book called The Candy Caper. But I also have here with me, if you want to see it, the second book, which is Busted by Breakfast. And the Trouble at Table 5 series is by Tom Watson, and it's about three friends who all sit at Table 5 in the lunchroom. And they call themselves Table 5. And in this first book, um, we hear a little bit about Molly. So Molly's the one in the middle here. And Molly really likes to have things just so in her life. So maybe you know somebody who's like this, somebody who wants everything to be just a very certain way that they like. Molly is kind of like that. And Molly is like that mostly about numbers and colors and shapes. And so like when she's having Fruit Loops in the morning, um, she doesn't want any of the green Fruit Loops. She doesn't want any of the purple Fruit Loops, only the other colors. She, so she very carefully will pick out all the colors she doesn't like. Or if she's eating hot foods like tater tots, she only wants an even number of hot food items. So she won't eat nine tater tots, she'll only eat eight. Now most of the time this isn't a big deal, but here's what happens. Molly goes to the principal's office one morning to deliver a slip for her teacher and on the principal's desk is a huge jar filled with Skittles. Molly wants to know exactly how many Skittles are in that jar. No, Molly has to know how many Skittles are in that jar. She feels like her brain is going to fall out of her ears if she can't figure it out. So she tells her friends, who are pre pretty understanding, and her friend Simon says, you know, this is probably gonna get us in really big trouble, but we could break into the principal's office and we could count the jar of Skittles while she's not there. So her friends hatch a plan. They break into the principal's office without the principal's permission and they are going to try to count the Skittles. And I will let you all guess what happens, but I'll give you a hint. It's not called awesome things at table five. It's called trouble at table five. Now I have another one here, 
And it's another dog book. I have two dog books for you today. Go figure. So this is My Furry Foster Family. And this is the first one in this series called Truman the Dog. Truman the Dog. I don't know if you guys have ever fostered an animal before, um, but what happens is you pick up the animal from a caregiver or maybe an animal shelter, and you are trying to work with that animal to get ready um, for that animal to be adopted because they have to learn all kinds of things, right? Like dogs have to learn how to sit, they have to learn how to stay, they have to learn how to heal. Sometimes they have to learn how to be potty trained and go to the bathroom outside. But Kaida, who is the main character in this book, is really, really excited because she already has a dog. So she knows she is going to be the best dog teacher in the entire world. She's going to do a great job training Truman so that Truman can find a forever home. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but Truman is doing something kind of naughty on the book cover here. Uh, Truman is eating trash. So Kaida um, thinks she's doing a great job, but within a few days, Truman has eaten all of the furniture in her room and he splashed water all over the house instead of taking a bath. And probably like the most gross thing is that like he totally got into the garbage can and ate a whole bunch of rotting food. So Kaida is starting to think that she might have her work cut out for her. Now, you would think that maybe Kaida would be kind of tired of Truman at this point, but Truman's actually really grown on her. Kaida would like to keep Truman, but Truman needs to find a forever home, and that might not be with Kaida's family. So, what is Kaida going to do? She has a choice to make. Either she can try and convince her mom and dad to keep Truman forever, or she can do what she said she was going to do originally. Just find Truman a forever home and give Truman away. So, this one is called My Furry Foster Family, and this is Truman the Dog. I hope you enjoy it. All right, friends, I have one more book for you today, and this one's really fun. It is Itty Bitty Princess Kitty, and if you can, if you can tell from the cover, it is definitely about a cat who becomes a princess. Um, now, Itty Bitty Killy, Kitty is just uh, like chilling out with her friend. Her friend's name's Luna. Luna is a unicorn, by the way, who when she gets too excited, she like spurts out sparkles um, unintentionally from her unicorn horn. Just like a little bit of an embarrassing habit. And an announcement fairy comes to visit them. So an announcement fairy is like a fairy that you would get um, if something really important was going to happen. Now, Itty Bitty Kitty's mom and dad, they're the king and queen. So Itty Bitty Kitty figures, well, the announcement fairy, it must be for my parents. But guess what, you all? It's not. It's for her this time. And the announcement fairy says, it's almost the day of your eighth shooting star. And on the day of your eighth shooting star, that is when you will officially become a princess. So um, she is really, really excited. She runs back into the castle. Her parents already know. And her parents tell her, uh, we've got all the preparations uh, ready for you. So you will be totally ready by the time you become a princess. And they tell her they're gonna have royal architects redesign her bedroom. They're going to have a tutor come so she doesn't have to go to school anymore. Um, they're also even gonna have a royal hairstylist come and the royal ha hairstylist will give her a whole new hairdo. So she's like pretty jazzed about all of this. Um, but then her friends start asking her some questions that she can't really answer. They're asking her things like, are you gonna come to school with us anymore? And she realizes the answer might be no. And they say, are you still gonna be able to have ice cream Sunday parties on Saturdays? And she's, she's not sure if she can do that either. So Itty Bitty Kitty starts to think that maybe being a princess is gonna involve some changes that she doesn't want to make. And to top it all off, she does not like the royal hairstyle she's given. She tries to go to her room to be alone, but the royal architects are up there, like, smashing down her bedroom wall with a hammer. And she is kind of overwhelmed. She just kind of starts crying. Um, so we'll have to see what happens in this book. But I have a feeling itty-bitty Kitty's mom and dad aren't going to let her be a sad princess. 
I have a feeling that itty bitty kitty's mom and dad will let her be any kind of princess she wants to be, even if it means not having a royal hairdo. So again, this is called Itty Bitty Princess Kitty, The Newest Princess, and this is the first book in this series too, so there will be lots more to enjoy coming down the road. Well, I hope that you all enjoyed hearing about these books today. You can come pick them up from the library if you want, and we hope to see you soon.